In 2015, our research team began developing the insulated solar electric cooker, where a 100 watt solar panel, which is connected to a heating element, attached to the base of a cook pot, directly brings food to a ball when thermally insulated. You might be wondering why we developed this technology. Well, the answer is in the statistics provided by the World Health Organization. According to the World Health Organization, 3 billion people cook food annually with solid fuels. And out of that 3 billion people, 4 million deaths are recorded, of which most of them are children. Aside the issue of death, it also causes a lot of financial constraints. Uh, it takes time to fetch firewood. And women who usually go fetching these firewoods are often exposed to violence such as rape or being bitten by snakes. Aside all these issues, uh, CO2 and soot, which are, out, which are products of burning these woods, also contribute to greenhouse gas emissions. Hi, my name is John Abraham, and I'm a part of the ISEC Technology Research Group. Traditional solar cooking, where sunlight directly heats the food, represents a solution to the issues that Martin has brought up, but has a poor adoption rate for a variety of reasons. Additionally, solar panels have experienced a steady decline in price and can now be purchased for downwards of 30 cents per watt, making solar electric cooking finally financially available. With enough insulation, it's possible to cook just with a 100 watt solar panel and therefore construct an ISAC for under $60. In its simplest form, the ISAC is an insulated cook pot with a resistive heater glued to the bottom, which is directly connected to the solar panel. The cook pot is then submerged in a larger bucket of insulating material, most commonly fiberglass. This version of the ISEC is extremely inexpensive and reliable. However, users commonly want more power and the ability to cook after dark. The use of a phase change material, or PCM, is the most cost-effective way to increase power and allow cooking when the sun is down. In contrast, battery systems can cost well over $100 and require a charge controller with more complicated maintenance. We currently use erythritol, an artificial sweetener, as a PCM because it has a high specific heat, a melting temperature of 118 degrees Celsius, and is non-toxic and in inexpensive. Here we can see one version of the PCM ISEC that's been cooking constantly for the past five months. A recent challenge has been working around the supercooling of erythritol. As the PCM cools, the temperature tends to drop below the melting point before crystallizing. Thus, the latent heat of fusion is not released. To utilize this property, we have found two effective methods, methods for inducing crystallization. The insertion of a metal wire with a layer of crystallized erythritol, or by putting cold food into the cooker. We observe erythritol crystallizing at either 118 degrees Celsius or 105 degrees Celsius. In practice, having control over the release of the latent heat of fusion can be beneficial because supercooling decreases the amount of energy lost while the ISEC is not in use. We also observe that there is a decrease in both crystallization temperatures after high temperature cycling. We propose that this degradation of the erythritol may be slowed if it's kept at a lower ma maximum temperature, uh, around under 160 degrees Celsius, but we are currently testing this claim. This is less of an issue, however, because erythritol is relatively cheap, so users can easily replace the PCM. Hello, my name is Marcoris. Uh, so we ran an experiment to simulate sunlight in the morning and cooking later in the day, which is represented by this temperature versus time graph. So in the first six hours, we see the cooker is heating up and the PCM is melting. And then we turned off the power to simulate no more sunlight and we let it cool down for three hours to represent cooking later in the day. And then we added 1.5 kilograms of water that quickly rose in temperature because of the big temperature difference with the pot, which quickly decreases as seen by the sudden drop in the temperature of the PCA. Then the water boiled for about three hours as the PCM cooled down and crystallized releasing all the stored heat, which is related to supercooling of the PCM. Then the water continues to stay hot enough to slow cook. This experiment shows that it is very possible to cook using thermal storage 
after the sun goes down. Now we can see an actual day of cooking. We can see that the iSEC with PCM is able to cook multiple meals in a day, even two hours after the sun is set. In total, we see that the iSEC was able to cook three eggs, beans and vegetables, boil one kilogram of water, cook dinner, and make two kilograms of jam, all in one day. Like Marcorio said before, we can see that the iSEC is a capable cooking device that we hope can significantly displace biomass cooking. Hi, my name is Olivia Hansel. And hi, my name is Grace Juice. And we are part of the development and dissemination team for ISEC. Our overall objective with ISEC is to build and disseminate ISECs in other countries using existing connections through communities. The picture below is our weekly supergroup meeting where global collaborators and student researchers get together to discuss building and dissemination of ISECs. Currently, everyone is in stage one of three stages of our grant. Each collaborator, each global collaborator has to be vetted by the dissemination team. And once they are vetted, they are given $1,000 to build eight ISECs and implement those ISECs into communities that they have connections with currently. And all of the countries our global collaborators are in is Ghana, Togo, Sierra Leone, South Africa, India, and Jamaica. And again, currently we are all still in the building stage. No ISECs have been disseminated. Okay, so as for lessons learned regarding the construction manuals, we open source our manuals and we host those on Google Docs because they frequently change as a living document to reflect the frequent technological changes. But we did decide that the construction manuals were not enough and we needed a centralized location where collaborators could discuss technology related to use in production. So we created a publicly accessible forum. And this forum has three main sections, a section for ISEC assembly, a section for ISEC use, and then a section for design updates. So the first section is the ISEC assembly section where people can ask questions about ISEC construction, if they're confused about anything, or discuss any alternative construction methods they have come across. The second section is the ISEC use section where people can discuss using their ISEC. They can post recipes and talk about any successes or unsuccesses that they've had. And the last section is design updates and the Cal Poly team and collaborators will post any updates or innovations that they have come across. 